Jesus plus nothing. 100% natural, no additives. Andrew Farley is celebrating your freedom in Christ. This is Andrew's opening song. Let's see if he teaches Jesus plus nothing. Sure, yeah, I think there's a huge misunderstanding around uh, John chapter 6, verse 44. Uh, we develop a doctrine, some of us, from a single verse. Uh, you know, no one can come to me unless the Father uh, draws him. Well, you pop over to John uh, chapter 12, and what do you see there? He says, well, when the Son of Man is lifted up, uh, he will draw all people unto himself. So it's really important that we see uh, that there's this invitation, and yes, it's divinely enabled, uh, but who is the enabler? God is, and who is on his heart? The world is. Uh, John 3.16, for God so loved the world. Um, Paul tells the Corinthians, God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not counting their sins against them. What is John 6 verse 44 really saying? The drawing actually dragging, a forced action in the Greek, by the Father is specific and effectual, meaning it effectively brings individuals to Christ. This is not a general call extended to every person, but a specific action of God towards the elect. This understanding is supported by other scriptures that highlight God's sovereignty and election, such as Ephesians 1 verses 4 to 5, which speaks of God choosing us in Christ before the foundation of the world. Supporting scriptures, John 10 verses 26 to 27, ESV. But you do not believe because you are not among my sheep. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Jesus distinguishes between those who are his sheep, the elect, and those who are not. Indicating that belief is tied to being chosen by God. Acts 13 verse 48, ESV. And when the Gentiles heard this, they began rejoicing and glorifying the word of the Lord and as many as were appointed to eternal life believed. This verse shows that belief is a result of being appointed to eternal life, aligning with the concept of effectual calling. Summary, in John 6 verse 44, the phrase, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, indicates that the drawing of the Father is not universal but specific to the elect. This drawing is an effectual call that ensures those who are drawn will come to Jesus and be raised up on the last day. This understanding aligns with the Reformed doctrines of election and irresistible grace. Highlighting that salvation is entirely initiated and secured by God's sovereign will. I was uh, recalling a, a, a message and also a blog post by a very well-known teacher, pastor, leader, uh, here in the United States, and he was basically saying, I'm bad, I'm a bad person, he said about himself, opening his message that way, and then concluding that uh, that's humility. And, you know, this dirty worm theology is everywhere today. For some reason, we think it's really spiritual to beat up on who we are. Dirty worm theology. Hmm. Are we to boast of ourselves? Are we to ignore Scripture and how we are described by God? Is this what Jesus teaches, or is this just what Andrew teaches? Romans 3 verses 10 to 12. As it is written, none is righteous, no, not one, no one understands, no one seeks for God. All have turned aside, together they have become worthless, no one does good, not even one. This is man, this is us. We are new creatures in Christ, but we have nothing to boast about. Any good works we do are from above and not of ourselves. Okay. Is Calvinism a different gospel? I tell you what, uh, I'm not going to go that far. I think we need to give the benefit of the doubt uh, because really we're talking primarily within Calvinism, we're talking about what happens at that moment that a person gets saved. Is it... uh, Is it God causing them to get saved, or are they truly choosing God, or is God making them choose? Did God pre-pick them to choose? So here's what I'm going to say, and I believe this. I believe that Calvinism is essentially the gospel all covered up with some extra stuff, 
uh, that is akin to Greek philosophy. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, uh, Plato and Socrates, for decades they debated fate and free will. You can read that in their literature at 19 years old. I was in a philosophy class in, at Furman University, and I read all about Plato and Socrates and uh, Aristotle and all of the philosophers and how they would debate, and then we, we would put on mock debates in our class, our philosophy class. One person would take the side of fate, and the other would take the side of free will. And it made for some great conversation, and you could see why Calvinists have a lot of literature, you know, hundreds, thousands of pages long, talking about predestination and whether one group of saints, they were pre-chosen or not, and whether anybody else has a chance, and all of that stuff. It's very philosophical. And it's much like the Greeks who were debating fate and free will. Now, after that moment of decision, after that person calls upon the Lord, uh, then what? Well, the Calvinists are saying a lot of great things. They're talking about how we're saved forever uh, by God's grace and that we're safe and secure in the arms of Jesus no matter what. And that's a great truth. And so, am I going to say that it's a different gospel, Kenny? No, I'm not going to say that. Andrew loves to hear himself. This was a long and drawn-out answer with no scripture. In short, Andrew says that we make a choice to follow God. God is biting his nails, hoping we will make the right choice. After we make the right choice, then Calvinists have some good teachings. We have already seen in John 6 verse 44 that no one can come to Jesus unless the Father draws him. So much for 100% Jesus and no additives. Andrew is teaching man over God. I mean, it's just, you can't take a sharpie and start marking through the fact that uh, God says, I want none to perish. I want all to believe. I want everyone to come to repentance. For God so loved the world. Jesus is the propitiation for the sins of the whole world. God was in Christ reconciling the world. And there's no distinction, Jew or Gentile, slave or free, male or female. The gospel's for anybody. Whosoever calls upon the Lord will be saved. So what? I Here we see Andrew with his shotgun theology. He throws a bunch of verses out there with similar language, but he completely ignores context. The Jehovah Witnesses do the same thing. Andrew is like a cult leader. He has all the answers, and no one else gets it right. 2 Timothy 4 verses 3 to 4. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions, and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. This is Andrew Farley. He loves to hear himself. His followers praise his interpretations. He teaches a works-based salvation where he decides if he wants salvation or not. His will overrides God's will and plan. He should be avoided at all costs. His teachings are subtle and easy to listen to. He is a wolf in sheep's clothing.